specific questions about your little one rolling in their sleep, you know, what do I do? Then you go ahead and post them quick. Um, and then I will get to all the general questions afterward. So I don't have to spend a terrible amount of time talking about this before, but basically there's a few different scenarios and I just want to talk you guys through it. First of all, babies tend to start trying to roll between four to six months. It could be a little bit later. <clears throat> Obviously it's a completely normal phase of development. We want our babies to be developing, but things can sort of go awry when our little ones conquer this, basically the second big physical milestone. Maybe the first one is holding their head up and the second one is rolling. So safety wise, as soon as you see your baby trying to roll, not has mastered rolling, but as soon as you see your baby trying to roll, then it's definitely time to stop swaddling them for sleep and to stop using the Merlin Magic Sleep Suit, which you know I'm a huge fan of. <laughs> My little guy still sleeps in his Merlin. He just made six months, but he is not rolling. He is not trying to roll. He's fat, he's lazy, whatever. <laughs> but as he starts showing me signs that he's trying to roll, <clears throat> then we gotta wean off of the Merlin Magic Sleep Suit. So no more swaddling, basically no restriction of your baby while they sleep when they are learning to roll because we don't want your baby to roll into their tummy and be trapped and not be able to get them into themselves into a different sleeping position. So safety first. So always stop um, swaddling in Merlin. I just prefer a cold turkey approach with that. Some parents will unswaddle with like one arm out for one night, two arms out for the next night and then no swaddle. I just think it's best to keep your baby safe. And so just go cold turkey. Um, it, obviously your little one will probably wake up during the night a few more times in the first initial nights, but they will get used to, um, sleeping in a traditional sleep sack. So you want to wean them to a traditional sleep sack, which is basically any arms out, you know, any of the traditional zip up and their arms are out the grow bag. I love the halo, you know, there's, um, there's a million. So any traditional ones that are safe for rolling babies. Also the zippity zip is safe for rolling babies and for babies that like confined spaces. So we're gonna try to wean to the zippity zip when we come out of the Merlin. I'll let you guys know how that goes. Um, yeah, so definitely stop swaddling and using the Merlin once your little one starts signs of starting to roll. And then no matter what, always place your baby to sleep on their back for each and every sleep. So for every nap and also for nighttime sleep. And this is even once you have a rolling baby. Once you have like a nine month old who is easily rolling front to back, back to front, you still wanna put them down on their back for sleep. So I'll walk you quickly through the few scenarios that um, happen when babies are rolling in their in their sleep or in their crib. The first one is I put my baby down to sleep on his back, but he's you know new to rolling. He rolls into his tummy and he face plants into the mattress like this, you know, and kind of is happy there, is quiet. I think he's sleeping, but it's terrifying me. Can he breathe? This happened to me with my daughter five and a half years ago, and I get this question asked a lot. So obviously we always wanna make sure your baby is safe. And the vast majority of the time they are, but it's always a good idea if you see your little one who's just starting to roll with their face planted into the mattress, just go in and check on them. You'll probably wake them up, but it's better to be safe, right? So go in, creep in there, just kind of like listen, see if you can put your hand on them, see if they're breathing, which they will be, but always check your baby's safety. Um, and if you don't feel safe, then just gently roll them back to their back. You might wake them up, but again, it's better to be safe. So that's the first phase of my baby's face planted. Now, if you do this once or twice and you roll your baby over and then you get more comfortable knowing, okay, she is fine. She just does this to freak me out. Then it's okay to leave her. Always call your baby's doctor. Say, listen, this is what she's doing. She's rolling on her tummy. She's face planting. What do you think? And go with their advice. Probably they'll say you're okay to leave your baby, but see what your doctor says. If they say you're okay to leave your baby, then you can continue to creep in the first few times. And then once you feel a little bit better, like this is her thing, then you might feel okay leaving her. My daughter did this for a while, but then it was a very quick phase. Then she would, you know, not want to sleep with her face planted into mattress and she would turn side to side and she was fine. Um, the second scenario is my baby rolls onto their tummy. They can't yet roll back to their back but they're okay, like they're happy about it. What do I do? So we're not face planting super like worried, but she's rolling onto her tummy. Do I have to reposition her? She's not yet fully rolling um, from front to back. So again, just call your baby's doctor just because they know your specific baby. They know if your baby's meeting their milestones. They know everything about your baby personally. So please just give them a call, say this is what's happening, is it okay? And if they say it's okay, which a lot of doctors will, then you're fine to leave your baby if they're happy. If they got themselves into that position, you're usually okay to leave them. Now the other situation which I hear most frequently about is my baby rolls to their tummy and they're crying. They can't get themselves back and they're really upset about it. So if this is the case, then you need to go to your little one and you need to reposition them. You can go in super slowly and gently and you don't wanna just like flip them <laughs> and go, good night. 
because that'll like startle them, right? So you wanna maybe slowly go to their side for a second, kind of say, it's okay, it's okay, it's still night night, and then gently roll them to their back. You may wanna just put a little bit of like, you know, your hands on their chest while after you've just rolled them to their back, put your hands gently on their chest, give a little bit of pressure. We're not holding babies down, but a little bit of pressure, singing a lullaby, help them relax a little bit, and then try to leave. Um, if your baby immediately rolls back onto their tummy, maybe you can just be hands off for a few minutes, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, watching them on the baby monitor, and then go back in if they get upset about it and reposition them. As you may imagine, your baby's sleep could be disrupted for a few nights, but this is a temporary phase, I promise you. So the best thing you can do to help your baby master the skill as soon as they're able to, is to have them practice during the day. So, two places your baby can practice. Number one is in the crib when they're awake. So just, you know, maybe when they wake up from a nap or just sometime during the day, you can put them in there awake on their back. And if they're really trying to master rolling, let them roll to their tummy and let them just kind of figure out getting comfortable in the crib because it's more confined than like the living room and figuring out how to maneuver around the crib. But also just as importantly is to give your baby the open floor a few times a day to really practice rolling. And the same will apply when they're sitting up, when they're pulling to stand, when they're crawling, when they're walking. Our little ones, you know, we have all these contraptions. I can show you one in my office right now. I have a little reclined chair for my baby. Um, we have, we had a swing, we got rid of it now. We had a swing, we have a chair, we have carriers, we have strollers because babies like them. They make parents' lives more, uh, you know, easier when we have so much going on but just make sure your baby isn't confined all day long. It's really easy to do, but just make sure throughout the day, so let's say three times a day, morning, afternoon, and maybe early evening, where you set if your alarm on your phone for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and you just put your baby down on the living room floor on their back, and you just let them do what they wanna do. You know, let them kick their legs around, let them pull their feet to their mouth, let them practice rolling, let them do tummy time. Um, it's really important for their growth and development and just so they get full range of motion. If they're sitting in a chair all day, then they're not practicing really sitting up and getting that core strength, right? Um, if they're in a carrier all day or even in the stroller, they're not really using their limbs and getting that full range of motion. So on the floor, if your little one doesn't like to be on the floor by themselves, then you may have to sit down with them and talk to them, play with them, lay down next to them, encourage them to start rolling, sit on their side with a toy and encourage them to come this way. Do tummy time, it really does help build strength. And tummy time goes a lot better when you're on the floor with your little one. And if your little one hates tummy time, you could lay down um, on the floor and you could put them on your chest, right? So get them a little bit more used to being on their chest and kind of practicing moving around. But the living room floor is, is better if your little one can stand it. Even if they only handle three to five minutes, that's fine. So give them the opportunity during the day to build strength and to get comfortable with new skills. And if you do this a few times a day, you'll find your baby will soon learn to master rolling. Depends on your little one, but usually when they get in this phase of rolling onto their tummy and getting stuck, it's usually not more than a week that they're in that phase and then they can start rolling to their back. So just give your little one practice. Um, I think I covered it all. So we talked about when they roll and they're happy with it. We talked about when they roll and when they're not happy with it. We talked about safety, so no more swaddling or Merlin magic sleep suit. And we talked about letting your little one practice. And you can check out my social media posts from today where I kind of explain all of this uh, in detail. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we're just gonna get through all your questions. I'm gonna start moving. I go, it doesn't look like an insane amount of questions, so I'm gonna do my best to speak quickly, succinctly, not quickly, because I think I do talk fast speak succinctly, give concise answers. I'm gonna link you guys to appropriate sleep guides if possible on my website, but I'll try to get to all your questions today. That's my goal. Okay, here we go. Courtney is the first question. Hey, Courtney, two-year-old. Ooh, so make sure you fill out my survey, Courtney. Two-year-old is now waking early in the morning, no schedule change. Could he need longer awake time before bed? Yeah, I mean, it really depends. So, and forgive me for not remembering all of the details of your little one in your sleep situation. I'm sorry. I've got mom, I've got mom brain, Monday brain, baby brain. Um, so forgive me for that. But I'll just say in general, a two year old, a young two year old can nap two hours a day. A two and a half year old can nap one and a half hours a day. And an almost three year old probably needs to nap only one hour a day. And this is to protect night sleep. Protecting night sleep means preventing um, night wakings from suddenly happening and also preventing early wakings. So depending on your little ones, let's just say you have like a 25 or 26 month old. 
Um, I would limit the nap to two hours. I would make sure it's right in the middle of their day. So like a five hour wake time, two hour nap, five hour wake time. Um, if they were sleeping later and there's been no other schedule change, you could, I mean, you could tweak the schedule a little bit. You could tweak the awake time before bed. It would depend on how long it is. Like I probably wouldn't go longer than like six hours. It's probably the longest I would go. But if you're at five, for instance, then yeah, you could try extending it. Um, also, I'm sure you've checked it out, Courtney, but for anyone else, I have a toddler waking at 5 a.m. guide. So you can find that on my website, Baby Sleep Made Simple. You can go to the toddler section of the top menu and you can find that straight away. It walks you through all the steps to prevent your toddler waking at 5 a.m. I'm sure you have a completely backed out room, white noise, I'm sure bedtime is appropriate and all that. So it's hard for me to say, Courtney, because it's like, I need to know the full situation, but checking out that guide, um, making sure nap is appropriate, it's not too long, um, can definitely help. If you wanna give me some more details, then maybe I can help you a bit more. Kate Elizabeth, should I put my toddler down early for a nap if he wakes at five? Yeah, I mean, if he normally naps at like one, then that's gonna be too long. It depends on what's the difference. So if your toddler normally wakes at six, but they woke at five, you could put him down for the nap like 30 minutes earlier, rather than a whole hour earlier. Because if you put him down for the nap a whole hour earlier, bedtime's probably gonna have to be an hour earlier. Maybe this will start an early waking schedule that you don't wanna get caught in. So let's just say your little one normally woke at six and napped at 11. I would put him down for the nap at 10.30. And then bedtime can maybe be like 20 minutes earlier, kind of splitting the difference again. Um, and so hopefully they can go back to their normal waking time. Also, Kate, check out my toddler waking at 5 a.m. guide because that's gonna walk you through, like I can't remember how many steps it is, but let's say nine steps to make sure you're doing everything every day because you don't wanna get caught in this horrible early waking um, cycle. And it walks you through everything, like awake times, naps, sleep environment. Um, but yeah, more than likely he's going to need to go down for a nap a bit earlier if he woke that much earlier. Hey Eunice, just want to let you know, sweet girl transition to two hour and a half naps. Thanks to your advice. That's awesome. Well done. Enjoy that. That's a great transition Two hour and a half naps every day. An hour and a half is like good for us parents. It's like, I get to chill out. I get to get what I need to get done. And then there's another one that's going to happen. So well done to you. Hope it lasts forever, which it should. Um, well done. Courtney, also do I follow awake times when he wakes early or put him down at his usual nap time? Well, yeah, that's what we were just talking about. It depends on how much earlier it is. It depends on how much earlier it is. If it's, if it's like an hour that they woke up an hour earlier than normal or less, I would really not change your schedule too much. Just move sleep times like a little bit earlier, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But if your little one normally wakes at like seven or 7.30 and they woke at five, they're gonna have to have an earlier nap. They may even have to have two naps that day um, just to get through the day so that bedtime can be the same as it normally is so we don't start moving forward with an earlier sleep schedule. Okay, next question is from Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Thank you so much for your advice on wake windows, getting 60 to 90 minute naps consistently and 10 hours of solid overnight sleep. This is great, yay, amazing. How good are the naps? I'm working on my little guy getting better naps and so far so good, I don't wanna jinx it. Ah, oh, that's great, I'm so happy for you. You did all the hard work. Enjoy it. June G, my newborn doesn't always have awake times between feedings, is that okay? 100% okay. Should I try to wake him up? I try a little but it's really hard to wake him. He's seven weeks. He sleeps for four hours once. Listen, enjoy your new baby. Congratulations on your on your new baby. No, it's fine. Really, until like three months old, if your little one's sleeping well, sleeping often, sleeping a lot, and like you guys are happy, you don't have to change anything. The only thing I would say is, you know, try to make sure that days and days and nights get established so that, you know, days are kind of bright. You let the normal noises happen for your newborn. Um, so that their body gets used to and their brain gets used to knowing this is daytime. I'm still going to sleep during the daytime, but I'm not going to sleep for light. I mean, he slept for a four hour chunk once. Okay. That's okay. But not consistently and nighttime things are quiet and they're dark. White noise can be playing. And this is really when your baby should start to learn how to consolidate nighttime sleep. That's the only thing I would advise if you're not really struggling with anything. Um, what you can do for your seven week old, I would wake them from a nap. I would try to wake them from a nap at the two hour mark, but if it 
never happens. But by the two to two and a half hour mark of a nap, I would try to like go to my baby. I would change the diaper, kind of undress him a little bit, cool some off, wakes him up. I would change their diaper. I kind of like move him around and talk to him a little bit, get him a little bit awake. And then I would try to feed them because you really want your little one to get used to eating every two to three hours at the most during the day because they need to get nutrition often. And also maybe just maybe it can help them start to extend the time between overnight feedings. If you let them have, for instance, a four hour nap every day and they're going four and a half hours between feeds, maybe even five, chances are they're gonna need to feed more often during the night and you just don't wanna get into that pattern. Um, so I would try to wake them up from the two to two and a half hour mark. But if you change your diaper, change your baby, feed your baby, burp your baby, and then they're fast asleep again, that's fine. Like you don't have to try to keep a newborn awake when they don't want to be awake. It's only if you start to struggle and they're awake a lot at night, awake for long periods in the night, that then we can try to gently shape their sleep. So please, June, check out my newborn sleep guide. If you go to babysleepmadesimple.com, click newborn in the top menu, you'll see my newborn sleep guide. It's quite lengthy, got lots of details. Um, again, you don't have to change anything right now, but it can help you just know what you can expect. And if things start to get a little bit hairy, it'll give you specific tips to help your newborn start sleeping well. All right, I hope that that helps. Um, yeah, all right, good luck. Have fun with your little one. Oh, there you are. Sorry, I missed it. He slept for four hours once at night and then once for two and a half hours and then once for one and a half hours. Then he's up for the day. Well, that's four, six and a half. That's an eight hour night. I mean, yeah, he went to bed quite late, probably 11 p.m. midnight, woke up at seven or eight. Yeah, um, it just depends on what his patterns are. But if you check out my newborn sleep guide, it will give you lots of details. But I mean, talk to your doctor, but if your doctor says it's fine to let your newborn sleep for a four hour stretch overnight, then go for it and just feed them often during the day. Jess, is it unsafe to swaddle with both arms out? I don't like, I don't like doing that. Like I mentioned earlier, I feel like if it's time to wean off the swaddle, we just wean off the swaddle. We just go cold turkey and then donate it to a friend who's pregnant or, you know, having a baby soon or something like that. I don't like to swaddle with one arm out or two because I still think you're, um, restricting your baby's movements and we just don't want to do that especially if, like they're starting to roll so I don't like to I don't like to do it Jess Holly hey Holly my little boy is 16 weeks and he hates sleep oh he hates napping it takes us ages to get him to nap and most of the time he usually naps for 15 20 minutes so frustrating so frustrating Holly I feel you but you know what's happening at 16 weeks you know Fourth month is a big, big, big time for development and often they fight sleep. They're just like at a period of increased restlessness and I'm sorry to tell you. Um, and I know we've talked before and I'm sure you've checked out my four month old sleep guide and my four month old sleep regression guide that are on my website. So, you know, the best thing I can say is it's okay to help him nap at this age. It's okay to hold him for naps. It's okay to have him in the baby carrier you're awake and you're supervising it. It's okay to put him in the stroller if your stroller's flat and to go for a nice walk outside if you can right now, given the circumstances. This is all okay if it helps him have a nap. Now, if you put him in the stroller and he cries, go for your walk. And more than likely, most babies, when they get outside and they have new stimulation, different stimulation, fresh air, all of these the different environment, give him five or 10 minutes and maybe he'll stop crying and fall asleep. Don't assume that straight away if he cries that that's it and he hates the carrier, hates the stroller. Just get him out in a new environment. It can really help. Put him in the carrier. I've done it with my little guy tons of times and just walk outside in the yard. You know, we just go outside. We look at the trees when he's like feeling fussy and restless. And at least for him, it really helps to settle him. So if that is okay. Not every nap for your young baby has to be at home in the crib. If you're supervising a nap in the carrier or the flat stroller, it's totally fine. It gives you both a break. You get to be more hands-off, like hands-free rather than hands-off, but hands-free. Um, and you can get some outdoor time too. Shorten up those awake times if possible. Like maybe he wants to sleep every hour and a half all day long. I hope you're not getting into a phase where you're obsessed with awake times though and tracking them like crazy. And if you feel like you are, feel free to just stop tracking awake times for a day or two and just like let things go a little bit more with the flow, knowing, okay, like, you know, I'm sure we've been awake for an hour and a half now. Let's try to get him to sleep, but not, if you get the point where you're obsessed and you're like, you know, really watching awake times and I've gotten there with my little guy, and then I take a few days off. I say, okay, I'm getting a little bit too obsessed with this. It's not helping. And so I'm just gonna kind of take things a little bit more easily. 
maybe not as much of the wait times, but more with nap lengths when I would get frustrated, like when he's young, you know, and he only took short naps for yesterday and today. Then I would say, okay, I'm gonna stop tracking their length. I'm just gonna like casually follow awake times and see. And it's a lot better for our mental health. And if we're relaxed, then maybe baby's a bit more relaxed too. But anyway, I'm not sure if that applies for you. Um, I would just say you're doing the best you can. Just know it's a rough month. Probably if you look at your Wonder Weeks app, it's gonna tell you it's like a stormy phase. And just give yourself grace, give yourself permission to just take it a day at a time and know that really soon, you'll just kind of feel the storm lift and you'll say, I think we're coming out of this. And then you can look at my four or five month old sleep guide at that point, and then you can kind of get into the steps that'll help him start sleeping better. You can see big improvements in little ones in just a few weeks, okay? He's going through a rough patch, so just try to take it day by day and know that it's normal and you're doing a fantastic job. All righty, the next question is from Scott Slessy. Where do I start? <laughs> I'm doing everything I don't, I'm doing everything I don't wanna do with my three and a half month old, like co-sleeping Sunny, what is Sunny? I'm not sure what Sunny is. Um, I know, I know, I know. We all have these amazing plans when we're pregnant, especially pregnant for the first time, with everything we're gonna do with our little one, and everything we're not gonna do. And then baby comes and throws us for a loop, or we just change our views on parenting and philosophy, and all that's okay because parenting is just, you know, all about learning. I've discovered. I've been a mom for six years. I'm on my second kid, and we're always learning, always adjusting. So that's okay. What I would say, um, Scott Flazzy, is that your baby's never too young or never too old to learn to sleep well. And if you are keep co-sleeping and you don't want to be co-sleeping, um, then we can certainly help you transition out of it. Have a look at my Instagram here. My Facebook's got more information. If you want to hop over to my Facebook and we talked about transitioning out of co-sleeping into the crib two weeks ago you'll see the post and it'll say how to transition from co-sleeping to the crib. So have a look at that specific social media post. It gives you the steps. You can do the quick approach or you can do a more gradual method. So check that out. And then also I've got a few guides for you on my website. I don't recognize your Instagram name, so maybe you're new, um, but go to my website, babysleepmadesimple.com and in the top age like menu, click for three month olds and you'll see um, three month old sleep problems and solutions and you'll also see um, a sleep schedule for your three month old. So check those two guides out as well as the Facebook post um, and that will give you specific tips for your baby's age that are age appropriate to help your baby sleep well at this age given what we can realistically expect for a three month old and it will also give you tips to transition out of co-sleeping. Um, the crib or bassinet if your baby's young and not yet rolling is the safest place for your baby to sleep. So it's a great idea to transition them now and it usually goes easier when they're young. So um, definitely check out those guides, start implementing those tips today and then join us. We'll be back Wednesday, we'll be back Thursday, we'll be back next week if you've got more specific questions, all right? That should get you started though. Good luck. Latch, 12, 16. My six month old spits up every time he rolls over. When and how much should I feed him before I put him to sleep so he's not uncomfortable when he's on his tummy in the night? So feed him earlier in his bedtime routine. So if you're following my peaceful nightly ritual, then you know we feed and then we read books for about five or 10 minutes and then baby goes to bed. But if your baby's rolling right to his tummy and spitting up, then I would move the feed earlier. Maybe move to the feed until right before bath time or right after bath time. And then you can do a little bit of massage. You know, you can, Take him out of the tub, put his diaper on him, keep him in his towel if you want, and then feed him for five or 10 minutes. Then burp him. Then you can do a little bit of massage with him kind of in an inclined position. Then you can do books. So you're moving the feed earlier. You can also feed before bath time. In addition to that, make sure you just spend a little bit more time with him upright after his feed. Maybe he needs more time to burp. My little guy's a really, really gassy guy. He always, always has a burp. So I'm always incorporating burping time into his day um, and into his evening so that it doesn't wake him up. Because I did discover that the need to burp does wake him up from a nap and cause a short nap. So I would do that. So I'd move the feed earlier. And I'd also give um, time, a little bit more time to get burps and extra wind um, come out. That should definitely help. You may want to move the feed to before bath time just to give him extra time to digest digest his milk. All right, I hope that helps. Um, Eilish Bork, my baby is six weeks old. Congratulations. How long should day naps be in total? Should naps not be any longer than 60 to 90 minutes each time? You can let naps be up to two hours. I mean, I don't love being strict with six week old, but like I mentioned earlier, we want to make sure your baby's feeding often, especially six week old. They need to eat like every two to three hours. 
basically. So at the two hour mark from a nap, what I do is I just undress baby, take off their diaper, change their diaper, which kind of makes them stir and wake up a little bit. You could like put them right here in the window, put a little bit of sun on their face, like if they're having trouble waking up. Um, you could try to tickle their toes or anything. You can walk around with them, talking to them. And then I would try to feed baby. If they fall right back to sleep, that's perfectly fine. We don't really have to watch awake times in newborns unless we think they're staying up for too long. If your newborn wants to just sleep all the time, that's okay and it can be totally, totally normal for them to stay awake 20 minutes. Do you know what I mean? Like the average awake time for newborns is like 30 to 90 minutes, but some babies want to sleep often. Um, so no, don't limit naps. It's only at the two hour mark. I would try to gently stir your baby and at least get them, give them a feed. Um, if they don't want to stay awake after that, they don't have to. Um, how much daytime sleep should daytime sleep be in total? Your little is probably gonna get like four or five total hours of naps during the day. So you don't have to track their sleep if they're kind of fine and you're fine and they're doing well enough. But if you suspect they're not napping enough during the day, if they're up for long stretches during the day, then you can start to track their sleep. You can use an app like Huckleberry. I love Huckleberry. I'm just using Huckleberry today. Um, it's just easy to use and it gives you really cool looking graphs that are kind of simple for me to understand. So yeah, check out my newborn sleep guide though um, on my website. You can find it in the top menu and it's quite lengthy. It's got lots of details on what to do if your newborn's not sleeping well, but also what you can expect and what you don't have to do if you have a newborn that's sleeping well enough. So good luck with that um, and yeah, we'll speak soon. Clammy. What happens in the middle of the night and if he's rolling around but not crying? If your little one's rolling around in the crib in the night but not crying, the best thing you can do is just give them the space and the opportunity to just do their thing. Most of his parents will worry at some point, like he's been up for 20 minutes, he's been up for almost an hour, he's losing sleep. Should I just go back and get him to sleep? Because I don't want him to be tired tomorrow. What? It, what it, how is that gonna affect his naps, right? But the best thing we can do if our little ones are not crying, they're awake in the crib, figuring things out, getting comfortable in their crib, but they're not upset, then leave them. They may lose sleep for a day or two. It's okay, it's going to happen as they grow up. But the last thing you wanna do is go and interfere with their ability to resettle themselves. They're basically just working on either being happy and in their crib and comfortable or resettling themselves back to sleep. But if I go into my baby's room and then I pick him up and help him fall back asleep or shush him or pat him, then all that's gonna teach him is like, oh, I need mommy to help me fall back asleep. So therefore I'm gonna to continue to wake every night and call out for her. So I know it's strange, but you know, watch your baby on a video monitor and as long as they're happy and look safe, then it's fine to leave them. The more you leave them to sort it out, the quicker they will sort it out and go to sleeping great at night. Liana, how to help my angel roll. I do tummy time a lot. She's six and a half months old. You know, we can't make them do it. They're gonna learn it when they learn it. The best thing you can do is tummy time two, maybe three times a day, um, as well as putting them on their back uh, on the floor, putting your little angel on her back on the floor. And you know, you can you can take her little legs when, when she's on her back and roll them side to side and kind of show her. But at the same time, just the best thing you can do is just give her the space and give her the time and she'll eventually uh, learn on her own. Um, I'll do that with my little guy when he's kind of happy during the day, I'll put him down on the floor and I'll just kind of do my things. And I notice sometimes if I'm not around, if I'm not paying him attention, then he's like, okay, well, what am I gonna do with myself? And then he'll just kind of like barely move his feet, but then he'll be inclined to do it. But if I'm in any way talking to him, entertaining him, then he kind of just lays there looking at me. So you could try that too. Miss Cuppy Cake, my baby only naps short intervals during the day, she is 11 weeks. I have a specific guide for eight to 11 week olds. So check that out. It's called how to help your two month old uh, sleep well on my website. You just do a search on my website, babysleepmadesimple.com. You can put two month old and you'll find it there straight away at the top. So it talks specifically about naps for babies this age and how you can help your two month old nap better. Okay, check that out. It's a long guide. It's got lots of details <laughs> and good, good, good luck. Next question is from Alex. My nearly five month old is resisting naps, especially the last early evening one. That's normally the one that they wanna fight. They're just so grisly by that time of day. Is it time to move bedtime earlier? It's currently 9 p.m. She settles on her own at night. That's great, but not for naps, totally normal. So you got a four month old who goes to bed at nine, self settles for night, but not for naps. Well, I would say, yeah, I mean, you could definitely try to move bedtime earlier. 
So you're probably trying to give her a nap in maybe the six o'clock hour, I would say. And if that's the case, and if she's consistently fighting it like every day for a week, then I would probably just skip it and move bedtime earlier. Um, I wouldn't try to, I wouldn't move it earlier than, try to not have it be before 7 p.m. If possible, you may need to push her a little bit with that last awake time, maybe asleep at seven earliest, just cause you don't wanna get caught in an early waking pattern. Um, but yeah, you'll find that bedtime wants to move earlier as your little one grows the first six months. Bedtime for my newborn could be 11 p.m. or midnight. Um, but by the time they're like five and six months old, they just want it to be earlier, usually 7 to 8 p.m. So it could definitely be that. Just follow your intuition. It sounds like you think you know what's going on. Um, so I would do that. And yeah, you could also try it for a few nights and see. Does she, does she continue to fall asleep easily and sleep really well at night and not wake up at a dreadfully early hour of the morning, and if so, then there you go. All right, I hope that helps. Miss Cuppy Cake, yeah. Your baby sleeps three hours intervals at night, she's 11 weeks old, I mean, that's good. Sleeping three hours chunks at almost three months old is good. Um, but check out my two month old sleep guide and my three month old sleep guide and they'll give you specific tips so that you can help your baby do what's appropriate for them. But hopefully that means extend sleep stretches at night um, and nap better during the day. Catherine, I tried moving my little one's bedtime to 8.20 p.m. but she's still waking up in the middle of the night. She'll wake up every two hours. Not only that, but she seems to hate her crib. How old is she? I mean, the thing is, when we're teaching little ones to sleep well, and if you join my program, uh, 21 Days to Peace and Quiet, there's seven uh, lessons that we go through, seven steps. And the first lessons are the same as in my free Exhausted Mom Survival Kit. If you click the link here in my Instagram bio, you have all these links. So the first, what I like to do, I don't love to do sleep training in one night. I don't like to just take a baby, say, hi, how you doing, baby? Come, and tonight, let's sleep train. Let's do everything tonight, because it can be such an abrupt change for your little one. You know, you're adjusting their bedtime, maybe their bedtime routine, maybe where they're sleeping, teaching them a new way to fall asleep. So it's bound to lead to resistance, stress, and tears. So instead, we take a few days to set up a foundation for your baby. And that involves adjusting bedtime. So it's essential that, you know, we find the right bedtime for our little one. We start a peaceful nightly ritual. We just kind of watch their naps during the day, make sure your baby stays well rested. But what is also equally important to helping our little ones sleep through the night is helping them sleep independently. So unfortunately, if we only do like one or two of these steps, like adjust bedtime or only work with naps, then it probably won't lead to our little one um, having dramatic improvements in their nighttime sleep. We kind of have to do all the steps of sleep training together. So Catherine, I'm not exactly sure what like in your situation, but if you've adjusted your little one's bedtime, then that's a good step. But just know that in order to get them consistently sleeping long stretches at night and sleeping through the night, we do have to encourage independent sleeping. So we do have to get your baby falling asleep on their own at bedtime and also resettling themselves during the night. Uh, I don't know how old your little one is, but if they are five months or older, then you can begin sleep training. You can actively encourage your baby to sleep more independently. Um, I've got several guides for you. It just depends on where you are. You can click the link in my bio and start with my free Exhausted Mom Survival Kit. So it's gonna walk you through those initial steps of setting your baby up to sleep well. And then depending on your little one's age, you can go to my website and in the top menu, you can click your baby's age and get their age appropriate sleep guide. That will definitely get you started in addition to tweaking bedtime um, with getting your little one sleeping better. All right, I hope that that helps. Courtney usually wakes up at seven, naps from 12.30 to 2.30. Bedtime at 7.30, but in bed at 7.15. Okay, so you have a two year old, so the first awake time is five and a half hours, and the second one is five. So yeah, you could extend the awake time. You could go for it, go for eight o'clock, but put them in the bed. So it takes 15 minutes to fall asleep. So why don't you try putting them in the bed at 7.45 for a few nights and see how that goes. Kiara, can baby's wake times be a little longer than the recommended ones? I follow them to a T and her naps are on point, but she doesn't want to go down at night. Yes, especially if you have a well-rested baby, you'll find that that last awake time before bedtime sometimes can be a bit longer. So let's say you have a an eight month old. And I say, well, the recommended awake times are two to three hours. But you're like, I think my eight month old would prefer three and a half hours before bedtime. It's totally fine. The more well rested your baby is, usually they can handle longer awake times. So go for it. Aromatic mama. Hi, Jilly. I have an 18 month old. She's sleeping 12 hours through the night. That's awesome. She's taking one nap for an hour. Her awake time is about four to five hours. Well done. That's amazing. 
I'm guessing you want to ask me about her nap though and how you can extend it. Um, just know that transitioning to one nap, so going from two naps to one, can take a few weeks. In addition to increasing your little one's awake times, we're also asking them to consolidate their daytime sleep. So going from napping for like an hour to an hour and a half to suddenly needing to nap for two to three hours. And this can take a few weeks for your little one to get used to. So the best thing you can do is have them sleeping independently through the night, which she is. Uh, keeping awake times appropriate, four to five hours is perfect. I'd probably, I mean, if she sleeps 12 hours through the night, I'd probably go with a five hour awake time, uh, both before nap and after nap, and that can help to extend it and make sure she falls asleep independently for naps too. So it goes into her crib with her eyes open. She knows she's going into her crib, kisses you goodnight, you turn off the light, you leave the room, she falls asleep for her nap. Um, if you continue to do this and go with an awake time of five hours, then I'm sure over the next several days to weeks, then that nap will extend. I have a guide on extending, well, I've got a few guides. I've got a guide on transitioning from two to one naps on my website and also how to extend your baby's short naps on my website too. Grizz Law, five and a half month old on day two of feeding solids, just milk and oats. And he had woken up at 4 a.m. both nights. We'll go down for an hour and then back up around 5.15. So you think you see a correlation between starting solids and waking up at night? Could be, it could be his tummy getting used to digesting. Um, I'm not sure when you're feeding your baby, but I wouldn't feed uh, dinner, for instance. I wouldn't like start giving um, a young baby solids at dinner time because their tummy could you know, be working through the motions and getting used to it and we don't want it to affect their sleep. So when starting solids, we always, or I should say, I always start with solids, uh, start with breakfast, sorry. So try like before midday, try like a morning feed. It really gives your little one time during the day um, for them to process and digest the food. And it also gives you time to watch them for any sort of adverse reaction, for any intolerances or any allergies. So make sure you're feeding them early in the day. Um, and then, I don't know if it becomes a pattern, maybe I'd speak to your pediatrician. Maybe milk and oats is not the thing to start. Maybe you could start your baby on a different type of solid. So I would run it past your pediatrician if you do it for a few more days and you continue to see your baby waking at night, maybe you could feed them something differently. Okay, I hope that helps. Liana, I moved to the crib, she loves it, but wakes up at 6 a.m. and takes her an hour to fall asleep again. Bedtime is 8.30, eats around midnight, and then at six. How can I move six to seven? I don't wanna start the day at 6 a.m. I know, I don't wanna start the day at 6 a.m. Even my little one seems sleepy that early and finally sleeps another hour, but stays awake from six to seven. That's so good you transitioned to the crib. Well done, well done. Make sure to celebrate yourself because that's a great big transition. Um, and forgive me because I forget your little one's your little one's age, but I think your little one's young. Maybe why don't you try moving bedtime a little bit earlier? So bedtime's 8.30, eats at midnight and then at six. I mean, it depends, like that is a six hour stretch. Um, I forget your little one's age, but if ever we want to start eliminating these early wakings and getting our little one waking, waking later in the morning. Sometimes an earlier bedtime is in order, which seems insane, but it works like crazy. So Liana, if you haven't yet, go to my website and check out my guide on your baby waking too early in the morning. You can find that in the section for four to 12 month olds. Um, it's gonna walk you through all the steps to set your baby up to sleep until a decent hour. Now you should know that 6 a.m. is an acceptable waking hour in the baby world, but you can certainly try to get to 6.30 or 7 a.m. There's no harm in trying. So check out my guide and start implementing those steps. It can take several days, but um, the earlier the better. And well done transitioning to the crib, that's great. Roxy, today I'm trying transitioning from two to one nap, trying your one nap schedule. Looks great so far. Fingers crossed for you. Just remember that not every day will go perfectly. Your little one may need some two nap days. It can take about three weeks for this transition to really like happen, okay? So you're in it for the for the long haul, three weeks. Hey, Tracinko. We did have a nice weekend. Thank you so much. I hope you did too. Our little one started moving around in her crib. She's waking up every two hours moving around and banging the railing. What to do? Yes. So like I mentioned earlier, the best thing you can do is leave her. If she's just doing her thing, moving around, but happy about it, making noises, talking, whatever, it's fine. 
we have to get our little ones to be comfortable in the crib. Otherwise, they won't be comfortable in the crib. And every time they're awake, they'll call for us immediately. They'll need us. Help me feel comfortable in this crib because I've never been here on my own when I was awake and learn to grow comfortable in it. So if she's moving around and even if she's banging the railing but not crying, leave her. My daughter did this too. She started to roll around and it would be like, boom. I would hear what was clearly her hand or her arm hitting the wooden railing of the crib and I would cringe and go, ah! but she never cried. So I'd watch her on the monitor and be like, she's okay. And it was really hard to hold myself back. But unless she cried or was upset about it or acted like she had hurt herself, then I just gave her the space to be comfortable in her crib and this phase didn't last long. So I'd encourage you to do the same. Now, if she's flailing around and banging the railing and crying, then you would have to go to her and you're gonna have to help calm her down. You know, Try to keep her in her crib. You could put your arms on her, your hands on her, and just like give her a little bit of pressure, sing to her, talk to her, let her know she's okay. Um, but if she is doing anything other than crying, and this applies to all milestones, like rolling, sitting up, standing, anything. If they're just doing it in the crib, the best thing you can do is leave your little one. Um, but if they're upset, then you're going to have to go and comfort them a little bit. Um, but good luck, Tracinko, and hopefully it will pass <laughs> really soon. Adele, 10 month old, falls asleep while bottle feeding breast milk and wakes up a few minutes after I put him in the crib and can never fall asleep on her own as she's just standing up and crying in the crib. So I have to pick her up and feed her again in order for her to sleep again. She won't lie down for longer than a few seconds when I help her get down from standing without picking her up. I know, it's called the Jack in the Box Syndrome. You maybe get your baby to sleep, you put them in the crib, they pop up, you help them back down, they pop up, you help them back down, they pop up, they're crying, and you're like, I wanna help you because you're crying, but I just helped you and now you pop back up and you're crying. Wah! You know, it can drive you mental. What I will say, Adele, is at 10 months old, the great thing is that babies can learn to go into the crib awake, fall asleep on their own, and sleep all night long. It may seem totally impossible, like I've just told you, you know, something that you never thought would be possible, but I promise you it is true, especially at 10 months. I mean, this skill develops around five months of age, so I'm extremely confident that your 10-month-old can learn to sleep independently and sleep through the night. If you haven't already, I have a 10 month old sleep training guide on my website. It walks you through the steps of setting your 10 month old, old, old up to fall asleep on their own and sleep long stretches. So go find that guide right now on my website. Just do a search on babysleepmatesimple.com for 10 month old and you'll find it and start implementing those steps. And really I encourage you, you know, if possible right now, just, just start sleep training as, as soon as you can. The sooner you start promoting independent sleep, the sooner everybody will start sleeping better. And how great would it be at your first one, at your little one's first birthday, if everyone was sleeping through the night? It can totally happen at this age. So check out my 10 month old sleep guide, start implementing the steps. You can also check out my free Exhausted Moms Survival Kit. I can get the link here in my bio. Um, between those two guides, you'll have some concrete tips to start doing every single day and you will see your little one sleep improve. But I encourage you, um, once you're a few days into these tips to really start weaning off the bottle as a sleep aid. And you'll find once your little one can fall asleep on their own in the crib, they will sleep longer at night. It is a miracle. <laughs> All right, good luck. Maramal Abdullah, I started sleep training my seven month old. Is it fine if the bedtime is consistent, but nap time is changing depending on the length of a nap? Yes. So the way that I approach sleep training is we sleep train at night first. And all we do for naps is just make sure your, your little one stays well rested. And that's basically following their awake times and seeing how long they nap. If you nap train and sleep train at night, what often happens is you have an overtired baby. They fight naps during the day. They don't nap well. They're extremely overtired by bedtime. They fall apart. They wake up more at night. They wake up earlier in the morning and it's a cycle. And like, what do we do? How do we break this cycle? So we start on night sleep. We only work on nights. And then once your little one's sleeping great at night for one to two weeks, then we nap train. So it's totally fine. Keep bedtime consistent. Naps can change a little bit depending on their length and the awake times. You're totally fine. Well done and good luck. African queen, my little one is so used to breastfeeding to sleep that I no longer know what to do. He wakes up during the night and can only go back after breastfeeding. I know, I totally know your little one could be six months old, 16 months old, three years old, but your little one is never too old to learn to fall asleep in a different way, I promise you. 
So depending on their age, what I recommend you do is go to my website and in the top menu, it has the baby's ages. Just click your little one's age and find their age appropriate sleep guide and start implementing those tips. If your little one is five months old or older, they can learn to fall asleep without breastfeeding. I promise you, I promise you. I've been through it and I totally believe with my daughter, there's no other way she could fall asleep without like screaming herself to sleep every night. But we totally got there in just a matter of days and she started sleeping through the night and it was wonderful. She just needs to learn a new way of falling asleep so that your little one can resettle themselves during the night. That's why they have to fall asleep on their own at bedtime. When they do that, then when they wake up later in the crib, they're like, oh, I know where I am. I'll just fall right back to sleep just like I did at bedtime. All right, so find your age-appropriate sleep guide, give it a few days, and then let us know how it's going. Jacqueline, five, oops, I always do that, <laughs> sorry. Jacqueline, five months old, been doing the peaceful nightly ritual for a couple months now. He loves the bath, but the last couple weeks after the bath, he starts freaking out, making our PNR not so peaceful anymore. I've tried doing bath earlier and later. Okay, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> well, it could depend. Okay, so if you think it's the bath that your little one really, really loves, then you could give him a good 15 minutes in there, maybe even 20 minutes there if you've been giving him a shorter bath. Maybe he just needs a little bit more time. But if that doesn't do the trick, then what I have found over the years is that by and large, the reason why babies cry during their bedtime routine or during their peaceful nightly ritual is because they're just freaking tired and they want to go to sleep. So, so many parents will say like, you know, the peaceful nightly ritual isn't peaceful because my little one cries the whole time. So what I recommend you do is start the peaceful nightly ritual 15 minutes earlier um, tonight when your baby's not as tired. You can also shorten it. If you have a young baby, you can feel free to not read to them right now. You can just hold them up right after their feet and sing them a lullaby or two. Um, you can not bathe your baby every night, especially if you find that the bath revs them up. You can only do like a two or three minute head massage. You can do like head massage for a minute or two, which feels so nice. And then you could just do like a leg massage for your baby. So you could shorten the massage. You could shorten the peaceful night ritual and or move it 15 minutes earlier and see if that helps your little one not cry during the whole routine. Usually moving it earlier does the trick because they're not as tired. Um, but if you think it's bath specific, you could let him hang out in the bath a little bit longer. 15 minutes, 20 minutes should be fine. My little guy loves the bath. Loves, loves, loves. It's our favorite time of day because he's so happy in there. But he doesn't necessarily scream when he comes out. But when he comes out, he's ready to go to bed. So I have to move through our peaceful nightly ritual at a quicker pace because he's just turned six months. So very, very close. Um, so it's okay to modify the peaceful nightly ritual depending on your little one. Um... So I hope that those tips help. Also, you'll see in my Exhausted Mom Survival Kit, I have frequently asked questions at the bottom of every lesson. So at the bottom of lesson one, which is about your peaceful nightly ritual, I have FAQs about this, like my baby cries, or my baby doesn't like the bathroom, my baby doesn't like massage. And so you can get specific tips on that. All right, I hope that helps, Jacqueline. Yesiniak, I probably didn't say that right. How long does it take for a baby to get used to a new sleep routine? Good question. She's been having a hard time falling asleep and staying asleep at night. We're on our second night of the peaceful nightly ritual. We're seven months and we're teething. It can take a while. I mean, if you're just starting a new bedtime routine for your little one, and if my peaceful nightly ritual is pretty different than what your baby's used to, it could take a while. It could take several days of consistency, maybe even a week or two. Every little one has different levels of like adaptability. Do you know what I mean? Um, and you're working on a new sleep routine, you're probably gonna be working on a different bedtime. So these are changes. Some little ones will be like, ah, oh, you just found exactly what I needed, mommy, and they'll sleep easier, but other ones may take time to adapt. Um, and so I would say a few days to a few weeks. Um, but if you're in my free Exhausted Mom Survival Kit, like don't get stuck at one phase. Don't say like my peaceful nightly ritual has to be 100% peaceful before I can move to lesson two, which is adjusting my baby's bedtime. We don't want that to happen because the steps work best together. So you wanna give it like a day or two of peaceful nightly ritual and then go to lesson two where we start adjusting your baby's bedtime, give that one to two days and then go to lesson three where we talk about baby's awake times. And once you're there and you've got peaceful nightly ritual, ideal bedtime, the right awake times for your baby, then you start to see some improvements in your little one's sleep. So I hope that that answers your question. If anybody wants to get my free Exhausted Mom Survival Kit, you can click the link in my bio and sign up for that. I email you like every one to two days for a week. So you just put your email in, your name and your baby's birthday, and then check your email inbox. 
Samawa, please, please. My 10 month old wakes up at 4.30 every, oh God, 4.30 a.m. every day. Even though I made his bedtime 7.15 and he sleeps on his own. Please check out my baby waking early guide because it's gonna walk you through everything. Like this guide I made, I made it again, I updated it, I updated it again. So it's got everything you have to do to help your baby sleep later in the morning. I don't wanna just like give you two tips right now and then move on to another question. Check out my guide. Baby waking too early in the morning, babysleepmadesimple.com. It's right there. Go to the four to, t four to 12 month old age and you'll see it right there at the top. Um, adjusting bedtime helps, sleeping independently helps, but there's other things. Maybe his sleep environment just needs to get changed a little bit. Maybe the timing of his bedtime feed. So please check out that guide, start doing those tips and then come back on Wednesday and let me know how it's going. Merriman Katie. My 16 month old, 16 week old, hardly napping during the day and awake every two hours at night, prefers to be held or breastfed to bed. I've been following peaceful night the ritual, but he gets upset halfway. Should I move it earlier? Yeah, it sounds like your little one's just overtired. So keep working through the peaceful night the ritual to get him used to it, but start at 15 to 20 minutes earlier. Look at the frequently asked questions at the bottom of the lesson one again to see how you can tweak it. Please check out my why is my four month old not sleeping guide. And also my four month old sleep regression guide on my website. 16 to 20 weeks can be a tiring and restless time for little ones. They go through so much development and growth at this age. The best thing you can do is just do your best to keep them well rested. And that's what my sleep guides will show you how to do. Just keep your baby as well rested as possible. Know that this is a temporary phase. Know your baby's going through an amazing big development. And very soon we can encourage them to sleep more independently and therefore sleep better day and night. So yes, move your peaceful nightly ritual earlier, but also check out my four month old sleep guides. Okay. And just put on your seatbelt and hold on. It's going to be a bumpy ride, but I promise you they will be past it really, really soon. Okay, good luck. Reinhardt Lindsay, I'd like to sleep train my nine month old baby gently, but every time I'm in his room or pick him up, put him down at bedtime, it seems to upset him more. Will your sleep training class work for me? Here's the deal. Most every parent wants a no cry sleep training plan or at least gentle sleep training for obvious reasons. We don't want our babies to get upset. We don't want our babies to cry. We don't want our babies to think that we're neglecting them or abandoning them. But the reason why I talk about baby personalities is because I believe in baby personalities. When I worked in the neonatal intensive care unit from birth, we saw babies were so different. Their energy levels, with their interaction, with just their personality, they were so, so, so different. So the reason why I'm talking about this is because I have discovered that one sleep training method does not, it's not the best thing for every baby. I can't say every baby should do a Ferber method because it doesn't work well for really, really sensitive um, babies. And I also don't think that a no cry or a super gentle sleep training plan is appropriate for all babies because some babies prefer hands off, which surprises their parents. They thought, I thought you would love me to like work through this slowly and hold you a lot. But for a lot of babies, it's really, really frustrating if you're trying to help them fall asleep in a new way and it's not the way that they want. In that case, if your baby, if you're picking them up and they're fighting or wriggling around in your arms, that is a sign of like, mommy, I love you and thank you so much for trying to do gentle sleep training with me. But the truth is I really would prefer to settle myself in bed. So in that case, you need to be a little bit more hands off. And in my program, I have two methods that are step-by-step -step methods that are more hands off. One of them, you stay with your baby. One of them, you leave the room periodically like Ferber. So Reinhardt, uh, Lindsay, yes, my program can help because I have other options for you. I'm not going to tell you, we'll just keep doing put up, put down, you know, um, especially for a nine month old, you can do more hands off method. So I would say, yes, we'll consider your baby specific temperament. And I've got other guides for you to choose. And also we have a Facebook support group where we answer questions five days a week. Uh, and we can help you tweak like, oh, maybe you should do this method, but throw in a little bit of this. We do that in our Facebook group. So yeah, we would love to have you join us and I'm confident we can get your nine month old sleeping a lot better, but take that as a sign. If they get more frustrated when you're, ha when you're hanging out or when you're picking them up, then your little one's going to need more hands-off approach. Hands-off approach. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, beauty PA. I need some tips from you. Uh, B Nora. Hi. Yeah. I remember you're in Australia, right? 17 week old becomes hysterical when I put him down in the bassinet. All my soothing techniques only make him worse. I can pick up and calm, but whenever I put him back, he loses it. I end up having to rock him. Listen, he's only 17 weeks old. We don't have to encourage independent sleep at this age. 
it's not until 20 weeks of gestation age. So 20 weeks from your baby's birth, sorry, due date, 20 weeks from your baby's due date. So your baby was born two weeks early than 22 weeks. But 20 weeks from baby's due date or five months old that we can really encourage independent sleeping. If your four month old is not having it being put in the bassinet or the crib awake, then don't do it. You have full permission to continue helping your baby fall asleep. The only thing I'll say is, I know you checked them out last week, but check out my four month old sleep guides because you may be still helping your baby fall asleep, but there are other tweaks you can be doing to their sleep routine and the sleep schedule that can improve their sleep. If they're losing it, don't stretch yourselves out. You have three more weeks to cuddle your baby to sleep and then you can start to promote independent sleeping, which will get him sleeping longer stretches. All right, hang in there. Okay, I just got the two minute warning. How am I doing? Oh God. Oh my God. Oh, it's the infinite scroll. Guys, I'm sorry. I was trying to talk quickly. Wow. Oh, I missed your question. Sorry, beauty PA. If baby sleeps from 7 p.m. to 6.30 a.m., do you think he can ever get to a 7.30 morning wake-up time? Mm. Mm. 11 to 12 hours is normal, so you could try to get to 7, but like anything more, you may just, no. No, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> but you can try to leave your little one in the crib until 7, so they wake up at 6.30 if they're happy enough. Feel free to leave them until 7, but yeah, more than 12 hours, not usually. All right, guys, I got like 20 seconds. Alex, thanks, Jilly. We'll try it. Hopefully an earlier bedtime improves things as she was sleeping well at night, but not since she's either been skipping the last nap or having it too late. Good, good, good luck. Uh, last question. Ah, Harika, I've read a lot that bedtime should be early. My child's bedtime is 10 p.m. Why do they need an earlier bedtime? They don't if they're sleeping well. So sleeping through the night, sleeping, I mean, it depends on their age, but basically... It depends on their age. I mean, a minimum of 12 hours total sleep in 24 hours, but it could be up to 15, depending on how old your little one is. The best thing you can do is go onto my website, babysleepmadesimple.com, the top menu, click your little one's age and find the age appropriate sleep guide. But if your little one goes to bed at 10 and sleeps until nine in the morning or 10 in the morning and you're cool with that and naps appropriately and is happy and thriving, you don't have to change anything. Um, but having an earlier bedtime often solves sleep problems. Okay, guys, I'm going to try to save this video. Wish me luck. It was really good to check in with you guys. I had a really good call today. Good luck with your sleep tips. I'll see you on Wednesday. Have a fantastic week. Lots of love.